Um, let's uh, start out talking about Tesla. Maybe we'll even finish today talking about Tesla. I imagine we will. In fact, will. this is kind of a Tesla for today. A Tesla kinda, weekend. Um, they had their annual stockholder meeting this week. Did you guys see it? I did uh, not. I did not. Mm. I'm, a, I'm a stockholder, though, so I should have. Well, you should have. It started out with uh, two shareholder proposals, both of them from vegans. Oh, boy. And they were proposing that Tesla... I get their head out of their ass and not be a bunch of uh, 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 orangutans and uh, to support the planet uh, by uh, eradicating leather seating worldwide. What a shame. And this was, these were the silliest people I've ever heard. They were quoting nonsense. This one gal told it on good authority that 51% of global greenhouse gases come from farm animals. Did you know that? Did you know that? I don't believe it to be you true. You know, I didn't know that, and uh, I don't know what 51% would come from. So I'll make something up. Yep. If I had to guess what 51% of global greenhouse gases came from, I would guess insects. Not a bad one. That's because they're more of cumulative body weight mm -hmm. of all the insects outweighs us and the farm animals by about two to one. Easily. And, um, and as far as individual head count, it gets worse. <laughs> but according to the UN, which I, she probably forgot what that stands for. Yeah. Um, so it was absolutely <clears throat> ridiculous proposals. And I was very impressed by how Tesla the guy holding the meeting, kept a straight face, let them have their presentation, and without comment, just kind of went on. Yep. And so, um, but they are uh, very much wanting a forum to discuss the merits of um, leather in automobiles as a way of punishing animals. Oh, it's not because of the uh, the black leather burns you when you get in the car on a hot day? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's the black that, vinyl. The leather doesn't oh, burn you. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> or that we have to eat them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> or that you have to eat them anyway. I don't know. One of our viewers, I talked about this in the blog this week, one of our viewers um, recommended I view a uh, documentary called Earthlings. He said it's the kind of thing you can't unwatch. Which is why I haven't watched it. <clears throat> I don't know whether to recommend that you do so or that you don't do so, but it was a um, shockingly badly filmed, but nonetheless gory and disturbing um, 190 minutes of um, animal death and torture at the slaughterhouse. Intended to make you want to be a vegan. Which, why wouldn't you want leather seats even then? Mm -hmm. At the close of the annual meeting, again, they wanted to take questions. Nobody got to ask any questions because, again, the Vegans had organized to take over this meeting and peppered him with questions about why he didn't get rid of the leather seats, which is exactly what they were talking about at the beginning of the meeting. It was so obviously and badly staged takeover of a Tesla shareholder meeting that I I was embarrassed for them and embarrassed for Tesla. So that's where we started. What's your position on it, Byron? I like leather if I'm paying $107,000 for a car. You know, I was talking to exactly. a lady about a, uh, <laughs> uh, originally about a Roadster mm -hmm. when they were out. And they were supposed to be $109,000. And I, she called and wanted to sell me a roadster. A very nice lady, seemed knowledgeable. And uh, I was impressed with her sales demeanor. But she had me at $126,000 so quick, it made my head spin. Mm. I said, lady, that's, even for me, that's just too much for a car. She said, oh, we don't have, we can back you right out. We'll put some cloth seats and yada, 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 and we'll be at 112. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, I'm paying 112 
thousand dollars for a car with claw seats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nope. You mean to tell me those are twelve thousand dollar leather? How does this work? Seats? <laughs> I said I just don't think we're going to get this put together, and I never did buy a roadster. Um, but uh, we associate leather seats with quality in automobiles. Luxury. And there's a reason. Uh, they last a long time, and they're cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And they feel good. And they feel good. Yep. Dog on it. And uh, if they were going to eat the cow anyway, what were they going to do with the hide? Come yep. on. Yep. So, Why not use it? Sit in it. I like animals. I, uh, I don't draw the same distinction between animals and humans that most people do. I think it's kind of a continuous spectrum there, uh, and there are no significant differences. Um, but guys got to eat. Has she ever seen any of the Serengeti plane documentaries? There's a lot of animal killing going on, and there's no people involved. No one <laughs> it's kind of a cir cycle, circle of life kind of planet, lady. Um, yeah. Did you ever see I don't, know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, the introduction of a liquid cooled charging cable. Why didn't Byron think of that? Yeah, Byron. Um, as soon as you said something, I popped into my head. They use them in foundries all the time. Yeah. Uh, high current, high voltage, high frequency metal melting, right? Mm -hmm. And so. I never saw Elon Musk look so relaxed, comfortable, and pleased uh, in the whole time we've been covering Tesla. And um, uh, the liquid cool charging cable, he said it won't even look like a charging cable. It looks like a little, you know, something on an iron or something. Yeah. It's a much smaller cable uh, for supercharging at higher power levels than they do now, wow. uh, is what they described. So I thought that was a fascinating introduction. The Model X, he said he expects in um, three months or four months. That's mm -hmm. how he said it. In three months or four months. Okay, five or six. I'm not sure what that means. The man's never met a date, <laughs> but uh, uh, but we still love him. Yeah. And, uh, and we still uh, believe they're coming. I wouldn't care, and I was resolved that I already have a Model S. And one of our viewers is uh, kind of gifting me with his Model X position at number 375. And there's 20,000 of them out there. It's exciting. The story is it. they're going to ramp it a lot quicker <clears> than <throat> they did the Model S, and so it won't be that big a delay to the 20,000. But still, number 375 in Looking three the months or four week, months. Huh? I really don't have the wherewithal to buy one of these cars, but it has Falcon freaking doors. Hard to say no to the Falcon doors, yeah? I'm an SUV kind of guy. The Model S is the only four-door sedan I have ever owned. Hmm. I'm just not a four-door sedan kind of guy. Well, if you're going to own one, that's the sexiest car. The SUV would sexiest be. Sexiest four-door car there ever was. Yeah, but this Model X is going to trump it. Yeah. It really is. Um, he said that they have just completed... Um, the construction of a very large capital investment in the largest, most advanced paint shop in the world. They'll be able to paint Model X's, Model S's, and Gen 3's all at the same time. Mm. And he's kind of, um, I would say, picky about paint. I've noticed the Tesla products all have pretty good paint. Very superior. As OEM stuff coming out uh, uh, Don't does. Don't the keys have a... Little key thing on the car painted really nicely too. Yeah, I'm yeah. right. So, <laughs> yep. The um, Falcon doors kind of had me a little bit surprised. Um, the biggest complaint about Teslas and the most problems they've had have been all doors, latches, hinges. Handles. Door handles weren't popping out fast enough. Really mine responsive. I walk up to the car, mine pop right out at me. They see you coming. About 30% of the time. Oh. Oh. Rest of the time, they don't know. Um, sometimes they pop out on one side, not the other. 
Uh, Weird. It's just sort of random. Didn't realize that. Um, the rear hatch is light. You just press the button and it opens, or sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you can press the aim and it'll open, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. And then it has a button you can press and make it close. That it'll usually do. Okay. Uh, I can't figure out any of it. But for a company that whose main problem in quality control is doors and latches and handles, they are now introducing the most complicated door on a car uh. worldwide. And one that's guaranteed to take rain in. Yeah. We'll see. The, uh, we'll see how it goes. They well, we sure would have given it the test yet last night. That was, yeah, was quite the rainstorm we had last night. Red cell about this mm -hmm. big over all of Cape. Yeah. It's coming down. Autonomous driving. I think Elon's been watching our show. Yeah, um, I think so too. He's, uh, he's going to want it. You know, I've been somewhat critical. I, I, not really of autonomous driving. Actually, this is made for me. I don't like to drive. I don't actually like cars. But it would be great for me to get in the car, catch a nap, and wake up in St. Louis. You know, uh, I would love to be able to get in the car and just get on the computer and check my email and you know do something productive other than staring down the road at truckers trying to make a living. This is true. Um, and so, the concept of autonomous driving, I'm not against. The problem that I brought up was in our legal um, system that has grown up around 100 years of automobiles is the incidence of mechanical failure causing crashes is so low that the driver is automatically assumed to be at fault in an automobile accident. And all liability issues and insurance claims and insurance issues revolve around which driver caused the accident. It's never about what the car did. Now, there can be exceptions to this, but it usually emerges as a pattern of, you know, 700 Brazilian Toyotas each with uncommanded throttle events, yeah. or a bunch of uh, uh, General Motors ignition switch accidents. Sure, sure. Um, and that usually kind of comes out after they find all the memos where they've been uh, trying to cover it up for yeah. the last 25 years while people died yeah. and they didn't want to spend the money, uh, 12 bucks per car, to fix it. And that's when yeah. it gets to be a real liability issue. Now, in an industry uh, and with a company that avoids doing anything it doesn't want to do by referring to the liability uh, problem, which yeah. often they say this as if you should know, and nobody can figure out well, what, what's the connection, what would it be their liability, but it's still a catch-all excuse. It's litigious world. For autonomous driving, they don't mind. Hmm. Why. Autonomous driving means the car's driving and kind of becomes part of the investigation as to what caused the accident. And Elon re responded in this saying that the driver is still legally responsible for the car. He made this judicial decree from his own bench. <laughs> uh, and that autonomous driving is a driving tool like an autopilot for a pilot, the pilot is still responsible for the plane. Yes. And so autonomous driving would be a driver aid where the driver is still responsible. He would hope and wish. This is the, the problem is he's referring to something apparently Elon's not a pilot. I think JB is. I'm surprised he let him get away with this. It, you know, a pilot is responsible for the plane. But if there's a plane crash, guess what? There's an entire government entity that investigates all of them. The NTSB, they're independent of the FAA, and their only job is to determine the cause of the accident and make recommendations for anything that should be done to avoid future accidents. There you go. And they actually take all the pieces of the plane and lay them out in a shed and try to reconstruct the plane and find out what happened because mechanical failures do cause accidents in aircraft. And guess what the number one cul culprit is? The autopilot. The autopilot and the actuators on the autopilot system. Mm -hmm. And that's the first place they go. And they kind of have to make a determination whether it was pilot error, mechanical problems, or some combination of the two. And if it does turn out to be mechanical problems, 
the FAA, not the NTSB, but the FAA will usually, following their recommendation, issue what's called an airworthiness directive. That's an AD, which is a mandatory maintenance procedure you have to perform before using any of those aircraft again. Uh, and the manufacturer has to develop the upgrade kit or replacement part or whatever it is to make the correction to the aircraft before any of them can even leave the ground. Yep. The entire fleet's grounded until this procedure's performed. Side oh yeah, Airbus, they, they've had, they have millions of these. Oh, yeah. um, and I, they're quite annoying. They can be quite expensive to comply with. And I have to deal with that. And uh, But it's because uh, in the aviation world, there is a shared um, responsibility for accidents, such that we have to have an entire government organization just to investigate each and every aviation incident mm -hmm. to determine whether it was pilot error. That's what you're proposing to deploy for 250 million cars in the United States, Elon, when you talk about an autonomous driving thing. For me, bring it on, cheer it on. He's talking about, hey, your car, you can whistle, it'll come to you. Well, Just like Roy Rogers' horse, Trey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on board, I'm, send me mine. I'm, you know, my Model well, S isn't equipped with it, but maybe my Model X will be. I'm always of the, the position that, uh, you know, I bet you these cars drive a lot better than most of the people in the Bay Area drive anyway. You know, that was his position. <laughs> so. He thinks that over time the data will, will uh, show that the computer will be much less likely to have an accident than the gal painting her toenails they're, while talking on the text message on the phone, driving on the freeway. Well, that's not entirely true. Well, okay. Few. They have logged some miles, and there have been plenty of incidents. This has not been an error-free thing, and Fair even enough. he says it's not quite ready for prime it's not time. Baked. They're still testing it, but no. uh, but that it's cool, and I believe it will be cool. Um, what else on the autonomous driving? Um, I, I mean, I can just hear the, 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 the issue, the, you know, 24-year-old titty blonde in the, in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I thought the car was driving. You can read it right on the website. It's supposed to do that. It said it was driving. It said it was driving. You know. Boom. It's like the blonde with the white out on the computer screen. <laughs> Yeah. They're out there. <laughs> They're out there. Follow, follow the snowplow around. <laughs> well, you just followed it around the parking lot. Uh, the, one of the most charming things he said. I was just completely engaged. This was a different Elon Musk for some reason. Um, pack swap. Lots yeah. of criticism that there's not much of that going on. It's all some sort of secret scam to get Zev credits from the state of California because you can charge a certain percentage under 15 minutes and there's all these conspiracy theories about the pack swap. Here's what he said about the pack swap. Well, it's kind of cool and we put one in a hair trench. Uh, yep. A couple of people close to us with Teslas tried it and they liked it. So we invited 200 people in the area to come try it and like four or five of them did exactly. and none of them ever came back. Our conclusion back. is <laughs> Nobody wants a pack swap. <laughs> and so we're not going to spend any more money on it at this time unless something changes. Our Tesla Model S owners don't want a pack swap. They don't care about it at all. They, the batteries are they won't fine. even come in and try it, you know, so. But they'll supercharge. But they will supercharge, and the supercharge is kind of well and good enough. Cool. Last week, I uh, talked a little bit about the cratering price of um, yep. trade-in vehicles and the depreciation on uh, electric cars. This looks like I was re predicting the future from information in the past, but I really hadn't seen any of this. Uh, this <laughs> is in April 2015. I've got some guys on the big blogs that are following EVTV, yeah. and they're basically stealing our stories without attribution. But I have to say, they do a lot better job of reporting on them than I do. I tell you about them, but they go dig out a lot of the facts. And uh, one of them picked up on the whole uh, cratering uh, price thing and uh, reports the uh, issuance of the April 2015 NADA um, perspective. And that is an electric vehicle retention report card. Uh -oh. 
specifically on the, this is online, you can download it. I'll attach it or something to my blog next week, um, but it does it. I went to the NADA um, car guide and um, looked up some stuff, uh, and I'll put this up on the wall. Um, the, if you take a look, I think the Chevy Volt and the Chevy Cruze are the same car. One has electric drive. Same I, get, I get corrected on that all the time. The 2012 Cruze had a list price of 20685 The 2012 Chevrolet Volt had a list price, MSRP, of $39,145. The, um, <clears throat> let's go to used retail, the used trade-in. Well, that trade-in is what you would get, so that is depreciation. Let's do the used trade-in. The uh, Chevy Cruze, like I say, um, the invoice price nineteen eight fifty eight, used trade in eleven three seventy five. So, you haven't lost half there. Yes. Um, the same year Chevrolet Volt invoice thirty seven five seventy nine. Um, you trade in thirteen thousand one hundred, right. less than two thousand dollars more on trade in, for a car that started nineteen thousand dollars more. Right, that's pretty grim. You're at um, almost exactly uh, thirty three percent of MSRP on your used trade in. It's three times. That'd be thirty nine three, and the MSRP was thirty nine one forty five. So a third yep. Yep. of the original price, um, whereas the cruise you would have um, well over half the original price at trade-in. The Leaf may be even worse. Uh, it's just like I think the Versa, which is very reasonably priced at fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. Make it electric, <laughs> as in a Leaf. Again, I get corrected on this all the time, but they're on the same assembly line. They are strikingly familiar. Yeah. The least <laughs> MSRP of 37250 Used trade-in for a Nissan Versa is $9,025. That's from the original 14670 Uh Again, well over half. This one holds its value much better than a Chevy Cruze. Mm -hmm. And the Nissan Leaf with an MSRP of 37,250 has a used trade-in value of $8,575. Less than the Versa. Yikes. It's a $500, $450 less than the Versa for trade-in. On a car that was way over double, thirty-seven thousand against fourteen thousand, quite the swing. as a new price. Now, what are people going to do with this information? I got to tell you, I think it craters the um, the whole deal. Uh, we're in trouble on depreciation. It's just that's the way it is. Uh, it's gonna. Oh, one final thing Elon talked about was their power wall. Oh yeah. They got like forty thousand reservations for this uh, battery yeah. thing, and, and he's way. feeling so good about it. He's taking some of their comments to task, and um, they're going to double the yeah. capacity of the power wall, and at the same price. Twenty k kilowatt hours and fourteen kilowatt hours. That's a I like that battery pack. Mm -hmm. well, you can get a car for nice wall. three grand. Yeah, we're talking about at that level. Why don't I buy a power wall to build a car? Yeah, start. You yep. know? I'd love them. We've uh, disassembled other packs. Yeah. And I have a reservation. <laughs> Repurposed them. Like cool, it's everything, yeah. Yours probably doesn't predate mine. He announced it online, which I'm watching real time, and I popped it up and entered a reservation before he quit describing the process. Is that right? <laughs> Finals the next day. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I, mine was before he really had said how this worked. <laughs> and so I think I'm pretty early on, but they're uh, kind of picking and choosing uh, between it. And, um, and so there you go. Um, we've had some interesting information uh, from Ireland. Um, Damien, yeah. apparently we've been fighting this Chatamo thing for weeks. Mm -hmm. We got it working in one week. One week. Yeah. From the first mm -hmm. line of code and to the first charge was about a week. And that was on an aero environment system uh, three miles from his house. And, um, and it, it worked pretty good. We did a little fine tuning and it just got to be solid as rock. Unfortunately, most of the Chatamo stations in Ireland are not aero environment. Unfortunately. They, they found some F attack or EFC, AC, and um, some DBT, it's another company that make less expensive um, Chatamo chargers. And we could not get it to charge on these. Mm. And they had some mystical things happening. And for about seven weeks, six or seven weeks, we've been wrestling with this. Um, I'm pouring through these uh, logs we have. We actually have a special logger to troubleshoot it. Um, and also a lot of print statements in the program to um, debug it. And winds up these huge logs that we're pouring through. And Colin's issuing a couple of upgrades a day. And Damien is actually near exhaustion running around the country. Putting plugging in, miles plugging miles in into various miles. things. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah, you got to run off can. miles so you can go plug in. Yeah. Plug it in. You know, and right. it's... Uh, this past week, uh, Damien kind of came up with a theory that I think is probably pretty good. Um, the spec on the Chatamo is 50 to 500 volts, 125 amps, 0 to 125 amps. His car is 177 volts. Should work just fine, Jack. Seems, Should. Seems within spec, yes? If you were Chatamo compliant, wouldn't it? That'd be fine, right? Sounds right. Yep. But especially in Ireland. Playing to the lucky. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't work. Nope. And um, he tried we fixed up the code a little bit where he lies. He tells them he's two hundred and fifty volts. And they take off and try to charge. But then they fall down. And then he started pulling spec sheets. Uh, that he found somewhere on these actual charge stations, and they're like 220 to 450 volts. We're good. And why don't they just say that? Why, why do we have to have the well, 50 then, to 500? They wouldn't be Chidamo compliant. Chidamo. Worse, there's actually a, I happen to know, being the spec reader and code specifier, um, there's a, a, a fault bit in the specification and in our code uh, called, um, let's see, um, battery pack, incompat incompatible battery yeah. pack. Yeah, yeah. That's how it's defined. They can throw, send a code back and say, hey, you're not a compli compliant uh, battery pack or incompatible battery pack and, and we're done. None of them do that nope. because that would admit that they don't fill the Chatamo specification. There you go. So they just fall on their ass and don't work. Oh well. Uh, so he uh, has been in a crush to uh, prove this out. And it's the land yacht is BMW E30. The 177. Is it 177? Expanding that voltage is awkward. Yeah, he can do it. You have to add some batteries. He's got to change tie some things. Tie him on the roof. He's a little Re yeah. constrained. Re Rebottom balance all the 180. Yeah, it's cells. a little awkward. So he uh, went to put the better place pack in uh, the BMW 840Ci, the E31. This is... Der yeah, he calls it Der Panzer. Mm -hmm. It's the closest thing BMW has to a 
muscle car. It comes with a big V8, and uh, it's kind of their, nice their answer to the uh, Stan had one. Dodge yeah. Charger or something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so he's converted that, but it's going to use our Siemens motor and the DMOC 645 and much higher voltage. 390 volts or so. Is it the DMOC 645 or is it his version it's of the upgraded. DMOC? It, both. Okay. Yeah. It's the DMOC 645 episodes. power electronics and he's put in uh, that controller board. What's the guy named Johans? Uh, something or other yeah. German guy has done a uh, the open, open source, source kind of um, um, controller board for three phase motors. Yeah. Yep. And then. Um, um, he's, uh, Damien's adopted that, kind of married it into the DMOC 645 to drive the uh, Siemens motor. And he has a better place battery pack, you recall we sold those uh, for about four days, two years yeah. ago or something. And uh, the, uh, he got one of them. And, um, and so he's going to put that in. Well, then he's at a useful voltage for Chatamo. Yep. And so we should be back on the road doing that pretty soon. Um, this week, he kind of hit a one of those milestones that we love to talk very about. excited to hear about. Well, let's, uh, let's show him what you got, big guy Damien. We think you won. Hello, folks. All I can say at this time is, go Panzer. If I had the strength, I'd be jumping up and down and doing triple backflips, but I don't. I'm goosed. But this car kicks ass. This car is going to be fantastic. I'm loving it. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some clips. We've been out driving just little laps here. Um, can't go too far just because I have no cooling system and I have no charger <laughs> and I have no instrumentation. Uh, but the Panzer drives great. So, next thing is cooling system, charger, and instrument instrumentation. But this just doesn't get old. Um, sorry for kind of freak out a little bit in one of the clips. Uh, kind of just get over overwhelmed. It's been uh, 10 months now since this car was parked here. Um, and now she's driving. But I've still a lot of work to do, but getting it to this point that you can actually drive it, that, that helps. Um, that helps a lot, guys. Gonna need a new badge. Okay, let's watch those clips and try not to laugh too hard. Uh, but this is just, uh, I can't describe this, uh, I just can't. Can't do it, so watch the clips, have fun, see you all next time. Okay, so this is our Renault Fluence uh, pack, well at least two thirds of it, installed in the front of the Panzer. Um, so I'm hoping you, you guys will be able to see, uh, it's, pretty t it's a pretty tight fit, um, that was no, no easy task getting that guy in there um, it wouldn't lower in from the, the top so the, what I ended up doing was lifting the front of the car up very high on axle stands making a wooden platform for the big trolley jack and sliding the pack in and lifting it then when I had it about halfway into place I was able to then rehook the crane up and uh, lift it into the final position and then create brackets uh, welded to the frame rails to hold the thing in. 
So I got a couple of uh, stills there that I'll just run through and it'll let you see it better. All right, let's fire this thing up. Okay, Panzer Test Drive 2 in park. Oh man, that's cool. Okay, foot brake on, hand brake off. Nothing behind me. Into reverse. Oh, into reverse. Brakes off. Panzer is rolling. We're just rolling in uh, neutral here now. Brakes are lousy, probably. Discs are covered in rust. Been in this driveway for a year. Steering is beautiful. Let's go for drive. Oh man. This is the best feeling in the universe. That steering is absolutely beautiful. Oops. Slightly more modern beamer here. Oh dear. This baby even has a worse turning circle than the land yacht. too old for this. Der Panzer ist sehr gut. Uh, this car um, it's been what now 10 months since she last drove uh, and it was nothing like this. <laughs> this is insane. Guys Go convert more cars because I say money can't buy this feeling. Uh, 
I know that's a much overused phrase, but it can't. You could be a billionaire and you could pay someone to build this car and it still won't feel the same. So go out there and build more cars. Uh, I'm kind of goosed right now, so I don't have a cooling system on the either the motor or the inverter, so I can't really go too far. Um, this thing, this thing just drives, guys. I'm not making a lot of sense, so I'm gonna sign off. Build more cars. More Panzer videos soon. more test drives. So that's uh, Damien McGuire. Congratulations. Yes. He was 
Nice very job, Damian. nearly job, Damian. overcome by emotion uh, at the intense personal satisfaction that you get out of that. He's uh, his story is uh, build more cars. Uh, it's uh, he really got a charge out of it. Ten months, and today he drove the car, and he just. Uh, can't get over it. it did sound extremely smooth and quiet to me yeah. uh, the way he had it but um, that's what it, that automatic transmission too that he's uh, it is he did an Arduino controller, controller yeah, yeah. for the uh, uh, what does he call it the Z something or other transmission Z540 I believe was it something like that and so Damien is uh, kind of our version of Martha Stewart. You know, Martha Stewart used to <laughs> yeah. show you how to make breakfast. <laughs> and when she'd go to the orange juice, she's like, okay, you start with some dirt and an orange seed. seed yeah. <laughs> and you grow the tree, you gotta have sunlight, water, certain temperatures, and you pluck Beans. the orange, and then you squeeze the juice out of it and garnish with a uh, parsley, uh, something or other, yeah. and, and serve. And then she'd go on to the eggs, you know. Yeah. Everything had to be done from scratch. Start with a with an egg, which yeah. came first. Hatch <laughs> yeah. the egg. Yeah, the egg. Yeah, the you, know, you would think start with an egg and then you crack it. No, she hatches the chicken first. <laughs> grows the chicken, gets a bunch of eggs, and now makes breakfast. That's to me. That's Damien. Let's yeah. uh, let's start from dirt and grow us an electric yeah. car from yeah. scratch. He's kind of coming around, and maybe that's not the most efficient way, but... Uh, he's had a good time doing it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. he does have that's a, a good lot time, of and he's it. learned a lot that yeah. way uh, by starting at the uh, resistor level. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so it's been fun following him. Uh, congratulations, Damien. That's uh, a huge accomplishment. I'm sure a very satisfying thing, but from my perspective, it's also a big step toward having a test facility for um, the JLD 505 and our Chatham Hill project. So that's that's a big play and a big milestone. Speaking of which, hey, hey, hey. Ta -da! Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> Byron Esmondhard of Kalamazoo, Michigan uh, was down um, helping me fix my uh, E Transit Connect. How'd that work out for you, Byron? Uh, you liked that trip, we didn't you? Fixed it, and and you went home. And what happened? I bought a Transit Connect uh, <laughs> from a who? From a used car dealer uh -huh. that bought it at auction from Detroit Edison, uh -huh. who's a utility in Detroit, and it didn't run. So well, about, what'd you get it for? I got it for six thousand dollars. He was asking sixty nine ninety five. He had to get one for five hundred cheaper than I did. Right, right. But yours ran. Well, that's true. So I had to. It's only natural. I had to play with it for a bit, and uh, there wasn't What'd a whole lot of diagnostics to it. Well, I, uh, on the advice of Brian Cochain, I checked both pack interconnects mm -hmm. or dis, uh, disable devices, and they were both open. So somebody was playing with it. Mm -hmm. um, Checked all the fuses in every single panel. It was not the wake on charge module that yours had an issue with. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then who suggested the uh, panel full of fuses under the middle of the car? Uh, was that you? Yeah. Okay. okay. My, so, and, then, and then what happened? Well, what I did is I got the, uh, the Kavasser light in the, the software, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see what the fault was. Um, it was failing to pre-charge. Um, I hung a scope off of it, basically saw that during pre-charge it was getting to around 320 volts with both half packs connected, and as soon as I disconnected one half pack, I was only getting to 290. So I had a, a current limiting resistor there, um, and it wasn't able to get up to the pack voltage, which the software was telling me was 345 volts. Ah. So at that point, you know, I had to go to sleep because it was like 2 in the morning, and I didn't feel like playing with high voltage anymore, mm -hmm. dying under the car. So the next morning I had a eureka moment and I just decided that I'm going to start pulling fuses, uh -huh. high voltage fuses, from because something has to be loading down that high voltage bus during pre-charge. Mm -hmm. And so I had heard the Bruce has had an issue, uh, very rarely, but they do have something. So I pulled the charger fuse first. It wasn't the charger fuse. Mm -hmm. So then I went and I pulled the uh, DC to DC converter because that's the next most important thing to drive and, the car. And where were these fuses located? They are located literally smack dab in the middle underneath the car. Under the car. 
that's the box I suggested he poke around in. Yep. And that's because when he was down here doing ours, we found this box full of fuses. We didn't know what they were too, but they had nothing to do with the 12 volt system. No, they're all high voltage. It, it wasn't that I knew stuff. anything. Yeah. I, I didn't know anything, but I knew where it was. <laughs> <laughs> they're interlocked. It's all, you have to have a cover and you have to shove a special connector in to make it turn on with the cover off. Not that I've never done anything like oh. that. Um, so then I do pulled off the, uh, the heater fuse because I was joking with some guys at work mm -hmm. after I told them 52 times that I bought a, an electric van that didn't run. Um, that you did what? Well, yeah, you know, I get excited about things. Um, I told him, you know, the best case is the heater's going to be broken, right? So at this point, I'm like, well, let's just, it's the middle of summer. It's 85 degrees in Michigan and humidity. Not as bad, quite as bad as here, but warm. Mm -hmm. And so pull the heater fuse out, hop up. Guess what? My car turns on. Mm. And uh, long story short, I had a brake light fuse out as well. That's why it wouldn't shift out of the park. And I had to, but I got it in gear and mm -hmm. I drove it. And it had been sitting for 15 months. Wow. So it had gone to a dealer in February 14 of 2014 for a coolant leak mm -hmm. 2,443 miles. And I picked it up at 2,444 miles. Mm -hmm. And what was the voltage on that? Uh, somewhere around 330. Don't was, quote me on yeah, 340, yeah. but it was like <clears throat> five or Plenty ten. There. Five or ten percent state of charge. I had three miles on the range gauge when I got it running. So okay. Oh. It was empty. Opposite of what I thought. Yeah. But it charged right up, and I've got almost a thousand miles on it in a week. So what I'm hearing is, uh, you know, in every world. Look, news is news for some good news for some bad news the electric cars are not working out on the depreciation mm -hmm. and here's a dealer that bought one but it doesn't work and they don't know how to deal with it and so it isn't worth very much apparently of course not either. were you pleased with the pricing you paid him for this yeah mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure he made a little bit more than he let on to believe but you but did I steal it did steal it and i could now sell it for Probably three times its value, I would hope. And uh, but I'm going to drive it. But with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of persistence, how bad wounded can it be at three years? Yeah, right at two thousand some miles. And yeah. with two thousand uh, miles on, yeah, how bad yeah. could it be? Yeah. I looked underneath the first thing I did, and I said, "We got to make sure it has a battery pack." Yeah, right. And I knocked on the metal case the pack's in, and it sounded solid, so I figured I had at least a 28-kilowatt-hour battery pack, and that almost makes it worth $6,000. Right. Then, yeah. then I had a Siemens motor and a Borg Warner e-gear drive. That almost made it worth So $6, if, it, if it doesn't work out, you got a, some valuable parts here. Correct, yep. And uh, so what I'm saying is, with a little bit of knowledge, um, and Byron actually is a professional a engineer, bit. and we actually yeah. go to him for advice on things, but um, particularly connector things. I'm not. Uh, to tell him that. <laughs> I'm not. No, it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but with a little bit of knowledge, um, and uh, and maybe occasionally watching EV TV, uh, there's cars out there that the the body politic. Uh, the unwashed simply can't deal with. They have no value to them. They're strictly a liability. Mm -hmm. But for you, if you hit the right fuse, you scored. Way to go. You know, that was a $58,875 product when it was introduced. Probably not worth that. That's why they went bankrupt. Sure, sure. How many of them do you think they would have sold if they had priced it at 6500 bucks? <laughs> They couldn't have sold them fa or built them fast agreed. enough. They <laughs> wouldn't be making other kind of cars now. Everyone would be driving <laughs> E-Transit Connects okay, true. by now. In three years, all other cars would have gone out of business, and that's all you would have is little white vans going all over the world. <laughs> yeah. um, they, had, they had other cars. That wasn't doable, <laughs> and, and there was something for everyone in between there. But the more knowledge you have about electric cars, the more likely you are to make out mm -hmm. in the current chaos and, and disruption of this disruptive technology. Yeah. If you know someone with a leaf who's going to trade it in, offer them a hundred bucks more than the dealer trade. Mm -hmm. Or a thousand. You right? bet. You'll probably still steal it. And you'll still steal and it. And you'll yeah. still steal it. Yeah. So. 
what can be wrong with a three-year-old leaf? For well, 30,000 miles on yeah, Mark or less. Actually, Mark bought one, <laughs> and, uh, and he came down this weekend, and his wife uh, called and said she couldn't get the leaf to work. So he, have, he's in trouble on his uh, purchase. We have to see what that was all about. Yeah, it'll be well, my point in all that was that uh, Byron liked coming down and playing with my uh, van so much that he bought one, and in fact, he liked it so much that he independently called for a meeting of the EVTV hack team, arranged a survey, came up with a date, and informed me when it would be, which I thought was very gracious of him, so I could be here. Yes. <laughs> I asked you. And um, this weekend, uh, the 12th uh, through the 14th, and today is what, Sunday the 14th, isn't it? Uh, Sunday the 14th. 16th? Uh, 16th. Yeah. It's the 14th. 14th. Today. Yeah. Um, yeah, yesterday was Saturday. We're Thursday, kind of Thursday, wrapping up, Thursday, and this yeah. is, uh, everybody's gone home, but Byron, he'll be staying over till Monday. And um, and how would you rate your uh, hack team meeting? Uh, it went very well. Um, did it? It did. We had a lot of, <laughs> lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, everybody got along really great. Everybody I think we're all pretty off giddy right off. too. Yep. Um, kind of like a mini EVCON, but we had a good time, and uh, we have a... Well, do I break it to him yet? Yeah. Okay. We have, a, I'm going to dangle it right here, guys. Mm -hmm. We have a moving Tesla drive -through. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. well, Jack's got to go to. Screw your iPad your side pocket. Is that an iPad? And we're seeing the data from the inverter because the 154 and the 106 are. Yeah, now I'm going to have two iPhones, too, because we're providing me with one. Well, see, this is well, sending. So, let's. Well, you're right. Let's look at. Let's look at it alone. Yeah, I'd like to I forget why. make but sure. I to, no, that sending is really sending. Yeah. Yeah. It was for me, but I don't think it's ever There it is. That was awesome. Oh. Oh, you can't. Um. This is. This yeah. is. This is the receive yeah. side. And I'm not seeing anything. That's actually a third one. Yeah. Have you got me hooked into the other bus? This is the send side. This is the receive side. And it's not receiving. Have you got mine hooked into the other bus? No, it's not connected to the bus. On Friday, uh, June 12th, the uh, hack team uh, kind of convened at the TV on, shop in addition side, to uh, it does, our EVTV staffers, uh, so Colin Kidder off. and Bob Wilson and myself. Um, we also had um, Byron Isbenhard and, uh, from Michigan. Um, Mark uh, Weisheimer from Ohio, Chris Ban Brand from South Carolina, Rich Morris from Madison, Wisconsin, and Brian C., uh, also of um, Michigan, um, join us at almost an ideal number. We had a great time, and uh, everybody uh, uh, contributed ideas and uh, talked things back and forth. Our um, basic setup here, the uh, um, Tesla drivetrain uh, control connector has uh, two CAN bus ports. They're really the same CAN bus, uh, but two wires uh, connected to the car and uh, another uh, two um, are passed on to the BMS system. So we wired those up so we would have two uh, connections and put a uh, laptop and a uh, can um, connected to one and another laptop and can to the other. We're running Colin Savvy can on the laptops and a program called um, Generalized Vehicle uh, uh, Reverse Engineering Tool. Uh, on yeah, uh, can do it. And so the laptop video. talks yeah. to the uh, um, can do it box, uh, which in turn um, connects us to uh, can buttons. 
We've done quite a bit of testing on the um, Savvy Cam uh, as far as how fast it could capture um, CAN data. And um, at one point, uh, got it up to about 7,500 frames per second. The problem we're having here is when we transmit uh, captured CAN data to the uh, Tesla inverter to drive the motor, um, we're uh, putting out a whopping uh, six and sometimes seven frames per second. And we've never really done much testing of how fast it could transmit. There was some problem in the program um, that had that kind of throttled down rather wild, wildly. Um, Colin, fortunately, was there and managed to hack together a, uh, um, a fix um, that would allow us to uh, achieve the roughly 1,500 frames per second um, that the inverter's accustomed to um, exchanging with the car. Uh, and so here, Mark and he are conferring on what the problem might be um, uh, prior to making the fix. Uh, so this is the basic strategy here, is to um, um, send CAN control messages to the inverter um, to control the motor. The Tesla um, configuration here is um, kind of interesting. Uh, everyone holds Tesla in enormous awe and regard. And um, uh, in fact, we had a uh, numerous member of our ha hack team um, trying to ascribe some magical serial number process, encryption, uh, um, very uh, uh, intricate uh, theories of how all this worked. Um, in practice, the throttles wired right into the inverter, as is the brake. And we have a button on the panel there where we can uh, simulate the brake input on two wires into the It's really an um, elegantly uh, simple system and not at all tricky um, to deal with. The CAN message traffic um, is about mode. For example, if you move the sh um, shift lever from park to drive, the car sends a um, mode command to the um, so, uh, Tesla what we inverter instructing it to go into drive. The, the, the inverter sleep. then responds with a um, uh, command um, confirming and, uh, that it is um, placed it in drive and that's used to um, move the little light on the uh, instrument just display just to from P to D. And so there's a little exchange there of mode uh, commands. As it turns out, the Tesla has actually got a fairly um, intricate um, mode um, situation. You have a, uh, a separate parking brake you can set um, from the uh, console screen. Um, you can elect to have uh, um, traction control on and off. Uh, you can have regen be standard or low. Um, you can have creep on or off. Um, you can be in a standard or extended range mode uh, to save energy. And um, so we have these various uh, modes in addition to our standard park, reverse, neutral, and drive um, uh, selections. And all of those affect the operation of the inverter, and all of that is done by CAN message. And so we have to uh, uh, play back uh, various uh, mode commands to get the motor to do various things. But the control of the um, uh, level of um, RPM and torque and so forth is uh, uh, done by hardwire analog signals from a Ford Focus um, um, throttle directly into the uh, inverter and uh, of course uh, for example the move from park to, to uh, drive you have to have the, the foot brake on um, when you do that and that is uh, uh, two wires um, that are mutually exclusive. One will have 12 volts on it and one will be at ground. 
and when you press the brake and the 12 volts goes to ground and the ground goes to 12 volts it's a very safe um, and kind of foolproof uh, system uh, but quite simple actually um, and so we're left with uh, decoding uh, mode signals that can be fairly easily captured from the car and from the inverter and what we're setting up here to do is transmit some of that to the inverter from one machine uh, and I'm on a second machine uh, kind of recording and observing the combined traffic of the signals we send to the inverter and the signals that the inverter um, uh, uh, replies with. Um, again, we start with a capture from a car but we have to comb out uh, all the inverter replies uh, from that. Um, the thing I noticed, and, uh, the inverter sends message 154. Let the inverter do its own reply. What we thought was the, yeah, what we thought was the gear The problem, um, as it turns, turns out, uh, as I said, was that we can't uh, transmit at the 1500 frames per second the inverter uh, expects uh, because of a software problem. Um, in the combination of Savvy Can on the laptops and uh, Givret uh, on the Can Duty um, Can Kit uh, that we're using to connect to the inverter. So it's a status out of the inverter, but we did strip them out from the car capture. We, we, we looked at all the frames that this generates by itself. We have a file called Motor Alone. And that's actually the output from the inverter by itself. Let's save the CRTD format. Uh, I descend it just to uh, because we have both things playing on the bus right now. Yeah. Maybe we can look at that later and see what the inverter started to do when we started playing messages to it. So you're never sending message 154 though? No. It, so it let's suspend it. capturing. Uh, graph. Thinking about the time of playing the file, the initialization, or even the dry rolling. I think it was. Was it? I didn't remember if it was byte was zero or one that started the, the file gear. Was also I don't. I didn't hear. Got a brake relay message that it has gotten. What time? I want to know is did we actually get that to have it? This that's the We have so many frames. <laughs> it's going to look great. That's 168 uh, seconds and 172 seconds. So this pulse is only like one second long. Yeah. That's like a half of a second pulse, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know what was being done in the car because I wasn't in the car doing it. So. There we go. Um, we yes. got that data saved, so let's yeah, like you said, uh, display status. Do you have the all the little files that he took while running around? No. Uh, just a second. What do you love that? Uh, I do. Just a second. Okay. Simultaneous copies of uh, the software we can run various places all at once. OK. 
kind of like to know what it was. It was 154 that the inverter used to send the gear, but I don't remember which bytes. Uh, I do. Uh, it's in the book. There's a free reminder there. What is it? Let's see, move this so When I printed it out into those pages, it's uh, uh, bike one, I think. I thought so, too. And, I, and bike two has the brake. It's just that button on the brake off on it. You know, like that. Oh, we should be able to see that. Why? Yeah. Did you, you sent brake messages at some, oh, there we are, yeah. Message 154, it was bike zero, it looks like. And one was the break. That's what, it, that's what it looks like. It gets confusing because depending on whether you start at one or zero for the bytes, I think the software always uses zero, byte zero to specify the bytes, but it's more natural to, to label them one to eight instead. Uh, it's not more natural to me. This is a confusing part of... Uh, uh, it goes back to our thing, is it can zero and one or one and two? I know, that That I'm kind of contemplating we should maybe switch them to one and two because it, it seems like it would be far easier for mere mortals to understand if it were it would not be put that way. <laughs> it is, technically, it's just confusing. This only ever goes to four. No, we said that byte 154 byte 0, uh -huh. um, byte 0 is the gear. This, as far as I can tell, went way high initially, dropped back down to 4, stayed in 4 most of the time, which would have been byte um, I thought it was going off this one. Reverse to park. It's byte zero. Yeah. And uh, depends on what state you're in, but uh, it's going to start out as a byte zero is going to start out as a uh, as a four. Yeah. It started out as four. Then then you're in reverse. Then it went to zero. Um, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, now it, it, right. it does kind of cycle. This is the states. But yeah. it's like they both go out and then and then this one comes on. Yeah, you can see that, like, in your graph here. It mm -hmm. was going, dropped yeah. to zero, went back up, yeah. dropped down a little bit. <laughs> right. And that's... Uh, but we're not getting that from the inverter this time. Uh, do you know why? In the replay, you're going from four to zero only, and that, that's all it ever does. It goes that's from four just to zero. the state. We never sent it a command. Oh, you. We turn on the inverter with 12 volts and capture this. That's all. That's what it, it was. There was no driving around in this. No, no. no this oh, now is this the file we're this sending? This is the combined. Or? This is the car. Oh, okay. This is the car reporting. The initialization and the rolling combined. Yeah, so you should have been rolling here, but I, I see it sticking no, four I, to zero and never go out of it. Huh. I, uh, I think. Park to drive. Four might have been park. It looks like four was park, and when it goes into drive, it kicks into. It starts at four in park. Yeah. And it, see, we're in, it should go to. Um, it looks to me like. Like our log here shows us in park almost all the time, and it goes from park to zero, which usually looks like there's a transition here when you go from park to something else. It, it drops to zero. Show me on the flow. But instead, we pop back to four, and it's stuck. Yeah, we Can you map here. that live from the car? Yeah. We can move it. So we could put the, the other uh, <clears throat> 54. Play it. And that is one, two, three, 
that is um, Park. Something began that was. Good idea. Something started to really taper up. That's the break. That, that black? Well, that wasn't what I was seeing on my other captures. Gray, maybe? No, that's black. Let's see, which bite is going high right now? It's, it's number two. Bite two is cycling upward rapidly in like a stair step pattern, and then it drops back off. Mm-hmm. Hmm. They all get stuck like that. So when we're looking for blue, I can't even find them. It's constant way down there and never going up. No, on this log, we're going from blank to uh, park. So this is the combined product? Yeah. This is what happened when we this, sent... What you've got right now is park. Yeah, it's park. We're never going to drive. It doesn't. The inverter is not going into drive, is what it looks like. But what file are you looking at? This is the car file. The one it, you did it, yesterday. It can't be. Well, this has just telling you it's the file. <laughs> yeah. We what we're looking at again, here is the combined file. data file you made First yesterday. First half of it's the initial And the inverter. And the second half of the rolling. We're in the part, in part the whole time. I think the inverter is just not willing to go into drive. with the black and the green, and you know, see the pattern's the same. Uh, green means we've switched it on, black as it was on when we started. Mm. Yeah, this, this just started without these bits set, but if they got set and it stuck that way. Mm -hmm. That's park. It's definitely park. And it started not in park. Okay. Well, in the initialization it was in park, but in the rolling it was. Right. That's right. It was in, it, it was in drive the so whole time. At, so at about 30,000, it ought to be in the drive. Out of park and in drive. We're starting with, I don't know what we're starting with, but we wind up in park at the, at the end of the final. And we cut off before, we never did put it in park. No, no, we stopped it before. We, yeah. we stopped it while we were in drive. I think the inverter is just complaining about something and locking itself to park. Well, that was that was the actual car. That's the that's car. Not this, not the bench. That was a car capture. Right? Yeah, that's a car capture. Mm -hmm. So is this. Well, this, this capture was from the car. Yeah, but but you didn't send by one or you didn't send ID one fifty four. The inverter does. does. I know. Yeah, but this mess the message we're looking at right now. 154 should be this Oh, you're right. We stripped 154 out of that Yeah. This, what we're looking at is what the inverter is reporting back to us, and the inverter is reporting back that it's in park. Yeah. Even when you told it to be in drive, it reports back that it's in park. The inverter here. Yes. Yeah, 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 because we stripped 154 out of that. Yeah, that's right. So you're actually seeing, you're seeing a report but the inverter never allows itself out to park. Which makes sense. When yeah. we press the accelerator, nothing happens. So there okay. Yeah, that would, be, that would make sense why the accelerator does nothing. The question, though, is why won't it come out of park? Welcome, Cocaine. Welcome. Hi, Brian. Welcome. Hello there. Come on in. I was just coming along. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
In electric vehicles, the driver experience is just as important as the batteries that power it. EVs display different information than conventional vehicles, such as the amount of energy stored, expected mileage on a current charge, and distance until empty. Monitoring vehicle efficiency and energy consumption are more critical than ever because of driving range limitations experienced in EVs that are different than your conventional vehicles. This presents new challenges to structure and simplify new driver information for operating EVs. Andromeda Interface's EVIC was designed to collect, interpret, and consolidate data onto one vehicle dashboard to provide a reliable and configurable device to monitor the operation and safety of your electric vehicle. From monitoring your motor controllers to your battery management systems, EVIC is a human-machine interface that seamlessly interprets all the complex data coming from these devices. EVIC presents the driver information in one simple display unit and we are continuing to build our portfolio of certified interfaces from other EV suppliers. Please review our list of supported EV components on our website. Andromeda Interfaces is striving to enable human-machine technology that helps improve the safety and efficiency of electric vehicles. By doing this in a cost-effective way, we are helping to accelerate the growth of sustainable transportation.
Rich, come on back in. Are we still cutting? All right, zoom back out and get the group. Let's go around the room, starting with Rich. Uh, just uh, for posterity, your name and where you're from. On the hack team, we start out with Rich Morris of Madison, Wisconsin. Bob Wilson is now Cape Boy. Mark Weisheimer, Columbus. Chris Brandon, where? Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Tastes good like a cigarette should. Colin Ketter, our own board, uh, EVTV guy. Uh, I'm Jack Rickard, and this is... Byron Eisenberg, Kalamazoo, Michigan. And he is a new, uh, Byron is a new um, uh, Azure Dynamics E-Transit Connect uh, owner and uh, uh, driver now that it works. And that's the uh, hack team that made it um, this week. And uh, it's, it's amaz amazing to me. I get these things worked out in my mind that over the next eight months, we are going to win. And these guys come in and it's rarely more than a day and a half. I thought you meant the whiskey. We lost our flap. Is that smooth or what? We have a fan, we don't know what temperature it comes on at. We may have to. That is vibration free. That would make somebody a sweet ride. I wonder what it feels like. Oh, that's right. I already know. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Yeah. Yes. So I got chills. It was. Uh, we should yeah. break the warranty. This is a major. <laughs> yeah, I think once Tesla <laughs> sees the video, the warranty is more. You can guarantee as soon as Tesla sees the video, that's void. Uh, yeah. Warranty void if removed. Warranty void if removed, Elon. We got it. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure that the drivetrain still isn't under warranty. Oops. <laughs> well, so much for I don't know why it would be, but <laughs> I was reading something the other day. So it doesn't take anything to keep it going. Um, oh, we have a huge you know, amount of work to oh, yeah, do know, on it's, the, There's no stay alive. The, uh, which is a little surprising. It's very surprising. We have, um, we had regen earlier. We had, I wonder what happens if we replay that log again. Yeah. Oh, if it stops it? Will it stop it? Yeah. Yeah. Fire up. Hell. Let me get away from it. <laughs> We're just going to replay the law. See if it stops itself.
Yeah, as soon as it got into around 12 or 13,000, something happened to that. Try to go into parks, shut it off, man. I like that idea. That is, that is gross. It's starting to clunk. I don't like it. So you played the file back? It's almost, it's more than halfway through the file again. Yeah, but the latter half of the file was a capture of the no. car with the brake no. off, in drive, and no, nothing happened. Yeah. So we have a tremendous amount of work to do oh, with yeah. uh, but, mode signals yeah. and... Uh, yeah, we ambered around it's much easier 12 or 13,000 and then around, I think, 23,000. Now it's just time. Yeah. Yeah, now it's just down to... Uh, yeah. It's not no, very it's good not video. <laughs> That's true. You have two belts coming out. The one. And a big sawmill blade out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These make it useful, right? <laughs> That's uh, surprising. What's surprising? That it's keeping running. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, just that I'm surprised there's safety. Yeah, I'm surprised that it's still doing it. Yeah. Like the UPM controller faults in like 20 milliseconds. That's what surprises me. That's, 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 that it's still running doesn't surprise me. We have a creep mode where if you take your foot off the brake, it goes forward. But the whole car can be disconnected. I mean, the master, master computer could be crashed. Now that's surprising. I mean, that's just that there's no watchdog at all. It seems like they yeah. just went simple. You would expect yeah, I mean, some I would expect watchdog to trip this off by now. So yeah. We're going to shut this down next time. <laughs> X, lockout codes and everything, guaranteed. Yeah. Tesla Model S drivetrains are going to be like dimes a dozen or expensive because oh, yeah. they don't put all the security codes in. You can guarantee the Model X now is going to switch to to encryption now that we've right. blown this right. open. It's completely encrypted to a... The thing that I, that I wonder, since they can do over-the-air upgrades on the Model S, they could add encryption to the, all the ones that are still in cars. Yeah. And overnight, but, but couldn't we take it out? An overnight update could turn right out of the water. How good, huh? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. We kind of got excited there for a minute, Jim. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, I'm man. pretty giddy. Uh, I'm drained. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm like uh, uh, <laughs> Damien. I just want to put my head on the steering wheel. It was uh, a beautiful thing, you know. Yeah. It was. We, uh, uh, and it was. Uh, I mean, it was a perfect moment. Mm -hmm. um, we had some theories. Bob has put in a lot of work, uh, wiring up this bench, um, kind of at a different grade than what we normally do, um, building a test bench. Uh, on account of we've done three or four of them and now know everyone. not to be chasing the wiring too hard. And know that um, they're not so temporary. <laughs> and they're not so temporary. In my mind, they're always temporary. Some of them are coming up on four years old now, yeah. so they must be uh, uh, permanent things. Uh, and I don't think this drivetrain will ever be in a car. We're going to be developing software and hardware for that uh, for a long time. Uh, fortunately, I've got two. We can build the car out of the other one. But um, so Bob did some good work. We had a nice, pretty maple bench. Uh, yeah. Better place battery pack. Uh, a cooling system, not on a cart, but actually, you know, screwed oh, you, into the wall and the, um, the thing oh, yeah. bolted into the wall. It wasn't, uh, you know, like Damien's uh, uh, th threshing machine yeah. of death that he hooks the. <laughs> voltage up to and, and turns the, it on. the teeth <laughs> at waist level trying to yeah. disembowel so lawnmower him. Propeller. Yeah. <laughs> so this is all tied down. We got this one tied down to the bench yeah. and, uh, yeah. um, and so forth. So we're ready and they come in and we're hopeful. We've done some captures uh, uh, with um, some Collins software and so forth. 
and we're, we're ready to test this thing. We didn't know how it would go. Yeah. Uh, immediately, we, we started sending it data and put the power to it, and it appeared to be an electronic uh, laser. That is a device that you apply power to it, and it lays there. <laughs> lays there. Yep. It didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Zero. Yeah. And so we're all, but we started throwing out ideas, and it's really kind of a brainstorming yeah. type thing. That's how you learn. Uh, everybody's got an idea, something to try, and so we would try them one at a time. Um, let's see, what am I pleased to report? We had had some information from a uh, uh, non-hack team guy who uh, kind of likes to kibitz that we had to have exactly 20 milliamps. Oh, yeah through this high voltage interlock circuit um, that's shown as a 60 ohm resistor, which it turns out it's about a 60 ohm resistor. And, but it has to be exactly 20 milliamps or the inverter won't come on. And uh, I knew that was bullshit, but he was quite sincere that that was the case. So we uh, wired it up and uh, we actually set it up with a 560 ohm resistor in series and 12.8 uh, yep. volts or whatever, and it works out to about 20.5 milliamps. We measured all this very carefully. Has no effect on the drivetrain at all. <laughs> Never did. By the way, just so you uh, know. In the car, it there is a high voltage interlock loop, and the car won't run if you have a break in that loop, but it, it's commanded by the contactor box. And so, um, we, we don't even have one with this drivetrain, so that's not the issue. Um, the uh, brakes are hardwired into it, and the throttle's hardwired into it. Um, so we tried a lot of things. Uh, one thing we had kind of messed up was the, um, the our tools, our software, yep. were not It was right. challenging. Yes. We had done a lot of testing, and Colin had done a lot of testing, but so had I of how quickly this software program can capture data. But now we're at the point where we're wanting to use send it to it. send data. Yeah. <laughs> and it won't squirt any data over. And, and, well, no, it would at seven frames per <laughs> yeah, second. Kind of slow. And we had timed this um, on, on logging data at up to 7,500 frames a second. We hadn't thought to test it for how fast it sent it. And it was thrown out nearly six, seven frames per second. Mm -hmm. So that kind of had to stop. We got that fixed, and now we're sending the data at the same yep. rate that the car does. And um, guess what? We plugged it in, and we turned it on, and it laid there again. It's still a laser. And so um, the, uh, the one that I've been advocating from the beginning was the uh, charge proximity signal, that that was going to be a problem. Not that I know anything about the Tesla drivetrain, but I have pulled two J1772 charge stations off the wall <laughs> and ripped the J1772 <laughs> connector out of the VW thing Trying to change your and yanked out 10 feet of wire <laughs> and left it and the pistol laying in the, in the garage floor. And um, so, not that I know anything about this, but at least on the thing, I learned to wire it where when you're plugged in, it mm -hmm. can't go. Guess what? Somebody at Tesla had exactly the same idea. They and, figured uh, there'd be guys like you out there. Mark measured the, uh, the pin with the 12 volts to the inverter and got 3.3 volts at the uh, char charge proximity pin. Yes. 3.3 volts is a spacious number. That's kind of like the power supply for a multi-controller. Right. And it's also like the pull-up voltage if you had a resistor. pin input with a pull-up resistor. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have anything coming in, you get a pulled up 3.3 volts or a logic one. How would you get that to be a logic zero? You'd short it to ground. ground it. Yeah. Seems an unusual thing to do, but we <laughs> tried it. And so instead of a 12 volt enabled or disabled signal, it's simply a ground. And if it is not there, it's not grounded and it's not going to turn. Mm -hmm. And if you apply ground, that 
one goes to a zero, and uh, and you can turn it. And that was the breakthrough that got it turned. Yep. And uh, long ways so, to go still. Mm, oh yeah, yeah long, long ways to go. We're uh, in fact we've been battling since then to PCs and get Macs. the right PCs and Macs and so forth to get it to do it. I still don't. We still have some problems with our tool software. We're working on our tools to work on the test bench. Same time we're working on the test bench. This is not really a good pattern, but we get excited I'm so excited about yeah, doing yeah. the project at all. It it let's just jump out of the airplane, we'll sew up a parachute, put it on, and pull the ring before we hit the ground. Yep. And um, so um, it's better to be lucky than good. Mm -hmm. This weekend, we um, got the... Um, the thing to turn. We got quite lucky. Yeah, because we're okay. There's there's interesting things with it. Like mm -hmm. when we stop sending CAN data, mm -hmm. it then lets us go into what looks like a limp mode of some sort. Seems to operate better than when we are. Correct. Yeah. Um, it, I think it's a 40 kilowatt mode, and it's definitely not max because, well, it doesn't go to max current. So, right, right. Um, but. There's a lot to learn, and we now, but we turned it, and yeah. that's the most exciting part about what we did this weekend. This was a great weekend. Um, it was <laughs> a lot was of fun. Just a great weekend. A lot of juice. Uh, a very manageable group of people. Um, All contributing. Um, get out. Mark uh, Weisheimer, uh, Chris Brand uh, came down. Um, it was uh, Colin, of course, was here. Uh, speaking uh, of invaluable. Myron. It was uh, who all else was here? Um, he didn't want to be mentioned. Not to be mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it, it was a great group. No, it wasn't and, Elon Musk. And we had a lot of uh, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, Elon Musk who didn't want us he to show him it. on film, yeah. Yeah. but he had a great time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the yeah. Uh, and offered several pretty good suggestions, yeah, I thought. Yeah, we were doing donuts for <laughs> Tesla back, out back, yeah. We ate chicken over. and pizza and drank whiskey and uh, he just carried on something uh, yeah. ferociously. But um, it was a great weekend uh, for me. I mean, it, it's, as Myron said, this is the end of the beginning, not the beginning of the end. Exactly. Um, we have a huge... Uh, amount of work to do to and, map and out will, these modes, say that, uh, reporting of the voltages and currents and oh yeah. RPM and so on and so forth. The but timing of this for me was uh, a lot of it had to do with this this weekend coming yeah. up because, mm -hmm. you know, um, we had, you know, decided that I was coming and it was, it was just perfect timing that, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to help get the bench ready for mm -hmm. this weekend and you know, we that has been kind of magical. Bomba just said last week in May I'll come out. I said okay, and uh, he got here. What do I do? Well, <laughs> Byron's called this event. Yeah. We need to be prepared for it, and he's been really since he's been here working on his bench. Um, and then uh, his first real experience with anybody in the room but me uh, has been the running of the Tesla, Tesla drivetrain. Yeah, which. I mean, to me, that's the okay. I guess the, we big, the, big, pack it up the biggest apple can <laughs> fall from the tree. Uh, no, Bob, it's not going to be better next week. That's, <laughs> this is not on. just the beginning. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. And and you got it up front. It's going to be all downhill yeah. from now. <laughs> It's pretty yeah, and by the way, the heat showed up, too, now, right? <laughs> I don't know. EVCON will be a good good highlight, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> the, Which uh, is what I'll be working furiously on, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we've been talking about that. Uh, yeah. Bob uh, insists that I have one, mm -hmm. and um, we have enough time to have one. And so, uh, um, so FCON's coming, guys. And, uh, get ready and September uh, 29th through October 4th. Uh, Damian McGuire has tentatively agreed to keynote the event, and um, so that should be interesting. And uh, I would say if we keep making the same progress uh, with the hack team and uh, uh, people really from around the world are working large, on these yeah. projects that by EVCON uh, there'll be quite a bit to show. And uh, so that's kind of an interesting uh, aspect of it. Um, I'm really excited about the Tesla drivetrain. Oh, one of the things that uh, 
the annual shareholders meeting was um, him again reiterating that the supercharger network was free oh, yeah. long distance for life and um, the unveiling of some updated maps that indicate a supercharger charging station in Cape Girardeau, Missouri scheduled for 2016. That's mm -hmm. kind of cool. It's going mm -hmm. next to EVTV, right? Yeah. For the one and well, only Tesla in town. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't yeah. have three phase, but, you know. The, um, you know what we do have? Solar. An inlet, a uh, Tesla Model S inlet oh, yeah. from Iraq, one of their chargers, and having worked on it on the evidence spocker, you'll recognize the single wire can. Well, here's a little hint. I happen to believe that the supercharger network is kind of a pretty damn close Chatamo variant, but it runs on 33.3 kbps single wire can. And it has that fold back command for solar, or not solar, but it can Reduce power and yeah, there's a couple of variations yeah. on the theme of Chad at Chatamo. They didn't have to exactly comply with the spec because it was their it's own their thing. Own. Yeah. But I've heard all sorts of things about the PHY home charging uh, grid network and special Tesla magic sauce. This is Chatamo with a couple of very minor easy to implement variations. I mean, yeah. it's, it's no code at all to do with you're describing. And um, if a guy was to try to crack that, it would help if he had a charge station right there in town. Yeah, right. And so. a couple of vehicles <laughs> yeah. to drive around and play with. Well, yeah. yeah. We need a couple of vehicles to hook up. No. a charge station here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to talk about it anything. Right? <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> and so, um, uh, Chatamo. The Tesla powertrain, uh, if there's any question about who's going to be first to make a uh, Tesla powertrain spin, let me put your mind at rest. Yes, sir. It was us guys. Been done. And, um, yep. and then perhaps the, uh, the supercharger network. That'd be nice to have a little kit to use that, huh? Mm-hmm. And so... Um, we should be pretty busy uh, for the rest of the year. But uh, once again, the EVTV hack team, I'm kind of in awe of. I keep uh, laying out six to eight to 12 month projects uh, and they keep knocking them off in six to eight to 12 weeks. Days, mm -hmm. hours, you take yeah. time Sometimes period. days. <laughs> yeah. And um, aggressive time schedule. So I, it's, I gotta uh, say, I'm very impressed, I mean, you know, I, a very talented a, group of it guys. It was in a room full of really, really smart guys that, uh, you know, and like you said, worked well together, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it, I was very humbled. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It, uh, it, it takes some getting used to. It has a certain pace. People kind of take turns. Uh -huh. And you answer the question they ask, not what you think they wanted to know. Um, and you kind of do a group mind thing that way. Um, and... Uh, uh, Mark and I do it particularly well. He'll turn around and ask a question. I just freeze. I don't try to figure out what he's thinking. Here's the answer to your question. What's next? And he'll go A, B, C, D, E, and we'll either get somewhere or not. And then we kind of go limp. It didn't work out. And then I'll try one, and uh, and we do, we do the same thing. You kind of go around in a circle like that. And uh, But everybody gets to watch everybody else's, and it causes a lot of ideas. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's sort of a... Um, uh, interesting dynamic. Um, I used to kid in the corporate America about if it took a woman nine months to have a baby that these managers that thought, well, hell, if you put three women on it, you ought to be able to get a baby in three months then. <laughs> uh, but this is the first time I've actually seen that work, um, <laughs> that it seems that the collective uh, uh, knowledge of the of the group far exceeds that of anyone uh, in it. Well, that's a, 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 a particular group of people. It can't be, you know, everybody in the world. But you, you know, it it's um, if you throw one clown into the middle of that, 
messes it up. Everybody just turns and walks away. I've seen yeah. this happen. Mm -hmm. It's just too hard. But uh, as long as it uh, doesn't have the clown factor walking. Don't you have to preface it with ass? Ass clowns? Yeah. <laughs> yes, ass clowns take two. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, so it was a very uh, pleasurable thing, like uh, Damien was alluding to. It was a very pleasurable thing to get that kind of, I call it juice, you know, when you work at something and you're plotting away and then all of a sudden it works. Yeah. This is like juice, like getting hold of the positive oh, yeah. and the negative and the 100 proof all at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> and the 100 proof. <laughs> right. And, uh, it's Which the positive, the, 50, the, the negative, and the 100 <laughs> proof all at the same time. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it's one of the things I live for. It's uh, kind of a feedback that feels very, very good. And uh, glorious. It's, we're not anywhere. It, we're months oh. of gruesome work to get this to be anything productive. Right? Like but we can hook up a Tesla drivetrain, press pedal, and make the uh, thing spin. Yeah. And it's very smooth. I found it surprisingly smooth. Yeah, too. it was nice. Um, and, uh, we'll have to get a load figured out for mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, we, we've stuff. got we a meter, the meter it up. Yeah, I'm, like we're going to put a JLD 505 up on it where I can make can messages, measuring current, uh, voltage, temperature, and stuff that will fold into our capture of um, what's coming out of the so inverter and stuff. And, and um, yeah, we've got a, still some work to do on our tools and our wiring up of the bench. And like Myron says, put it, put it under a little bit of a load where we can uh, like start seeing what 310 well, kilowatts feels like. It's amazing. You turn it off and it's... I don't know what speed it's going, but it takes just four, four minutes to spool down. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, and just goes. Very smoothly uh, yeah. turning. Uh, yeah. It'll even be smoother after you put some ATF red line in it. There's no fluid in the trees? I don't think so. Oh. Yeah, it's, yeah, we, we should probably do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to figure that out. Yeah, we'll work on that. Okay. We do have the Everlast cooling. That was yeah. working flawlessly. Pretty much. Um, and uh, so huge deal I think I'm very pleased um, pump going into the future it was a uh, mm, um, interesting trial by fire for Bob Wilson in his first yeah. days at oh. uh, board watch and um, the or uh, yeah. at EV TV, <laughs> one of those companies yeah. the, uh, and he's here just in time my memory's starting to fail about the same time as my knees are <laughs> and uh, so there we go. Yeah. Um, so really stay excited. with us. Um, really excited. Thanks, what else have we got going on? Well, Evcon planning now is what I, you know, and then, uh, it, it, well, for me, it's, it's uh, obviously whatever we've got to do to keep the Tesla bench running, and then uh, I want to get on the green thing. Right. And, right, right. Uh, you know, hopefully we can have that ready for Evcon as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, it's not far. Uh, and then obviously EFCON, which mm -hmm. you know, is, is going to be last big... week of September, first week of October. Right. I, yeah. I think that's what I remember from last year. So. Yeah, yeah, September 29th, October 4th. I think of it as the first week of October, and it's absolutely the week uh, of... finest week of weather in Cape Girardeau, or else it'll rain all week. Yeah. Cool things have happened. Yeah. But it's uh, it's a great time of year with. The...